Question number six from P2 International A Level at Excel, June 2019. Here we have a question, part A and B is basically about the factor theorem and factorizing these cubic expressions. Um, and part C is about trigonometry. So let's get started straight away. It says, given that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x, show that k equals 9 for this expression. So we know that if something is a factor of um, a function, then the thing that makes the bracket 0 will substitute it into the expression, will make the, the actual expression 0. So basically, if x minus 3, if x minus 3 is a factor, of f of x, then we know that f3 is equal to 0, because 3 is the value of x you have to put in here to make this bracket 0. Okay, so let's see what, we know that if f3 equals 0, we can therefore find what k is, because it will be the only unknown. So let's substitute instead of x3, instead of x3, so you have k times 3 cubed, minus 15 times 3 squared, minus 32 times 3 minus 12 and we know that's going to equal 0 if x minus 3 is a factor which we told us told us it is so 3 cubed is 27 so that's 27k 15 times 9 okay 15 times 9 um, that's going to give you 135 that's 15 times 9 9 times 10 is 90 9 times 5 is 45 yes and 32 times 3, that's going to give you 96. And minus 12 equals 0. So you have 27k equals the sum of all of these, because it's all positive on this side. So you have, um, let me just put this in the calculator in case I make a silly mistake. You're going to have 135 plus 96 plus 12 gives you 243. Oops, 243, so k is equal to 243 divided by 27, and that should be 9, yep, it gives you 9, so we know that k is equal to 9, so therefore we've shown that k is equal to 9, because x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, so that's part A finished. Now for part B, Use algebra and showing each step of your, of your working fully factorized f of x. Okay, so we know that x minus 3 is a factor. And we know that the function is f of x, which is 9x cubed. Uh, we know k is 9 now. 9x cubed minus 15x squared. Um, minus 32x minus 12. Okay, there's different ways of doing this. One of the ways is by using algebraic long division. We put the factor on the outside and then you make sure that all the terms are here. You have all of them. You've got the x cubed term. You've got the x term, x squared term. You've got the x term and you've got the constant. If any of them were missing, you'd have to put a zero of that thing in, in its place. Okay, and then we can use algebraic log division x into 9x cubed equals 9x squared times, then multiply both of these by 9x squared, so you get 9x cubed minus 27x squared, then you subtract these two lines, that gives you 0, that gives you minus 15 plus 27, which is 12, 12x squared, so that gives you plus 12x, and bring the minus 32x down, you've got 12 times x is 12x squared, 12x times x is 12x squared, sorry, and 12 times minus, 12x times minus 3 is minus 32x. Okay, then we go to, again, subtract. This will give you 0, this will give you minus 32 plus 36, which is 4, so you've got 4x. 4x into x goes 4 times, so you've got plus 4. So, yeah. <coughs> so we bring down the minus 12 here. 4 times x is 4x, 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. Good, no, rema no remainder, range of zero. Therefore, we can say that um, you've got 9x cubed minus 15x squared minus 30, 
2x minus 12 is equal to x minus 3 times 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. Now we can continue to fully factorize this by factorizing this last section here. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you um, a, a different method of coming to the same situation here. And that is as follows, just the alternative method of continuing to get to this stage. And that is by, if you know x minus 3 is a factor, you've got x minus 3 times. Now, it's going to be multiplied by quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. And that's equal to 9x cubed minus 15x squared minus 32x and minus 12. So it's an alternative way of, um, instead of doing algebraic long division, of getting this as a something times a quadratic and then we can get to this stage and continue. So basically what we can do here is we can compare the coefficients. Always easy to compare the coefficients of the highest power first. So on this side the x cubed term will only be given by x times ax squared. The rest of them will not, not, nothing else will give us an x cubed term. So you've got a on this side, on the left side as your x cubed term. On this side you've got 9. So we know a is equal to 9 which so that's going to be 9x squared as you, 9x squared as you can see here. You can compare the constant terms. Always compare the highest and the lowest. That's the easiest first. For the constant term, on this side, the constant will be given by minus 3 times c. So it's minus 3. And on this side, the constant term is minus 12. So minus 3, sorry, minus 3c, minus 3c is equal to minus 12. So minus 3c is equal to minus 12. So we can see from this that therefore c is going to be equal to 4. As you can see here, the c value is 4. And to find the x squared, to find the, the, the value of b, we can choose x or x squared if you want. Let's look at the x squared term. Now the x squared term on the left side here will be given when we do multiply x by bx, that's bx squared. And also, when we do minus 3 times ax squared, that's going to give you minus 3a. There will be no other x squared term on this side. That will be x cubed, x squared, x, x squared, x, and constant. So yeah, the only ones will be b when you do x times bx, and minus 3a when you do minus 3 times ax squared. On the right-hand side, the x squared term is minus 15. So we already know that a is equal to 9. So you have b minus 3 times 9, which is 27, equals minus 15. So b is going to be minus 15 plus 27, which is 27 minus 15, which is 12, which we know from here that's 12. So we could use this comparing coefficients method, or we could use this method here of long division to get to this stage. Both of them are perfectly fine. Now, we have to continue and fully factorize. Now this is something that you can factorize. Um, now there's different methods of doing it. I'll show you one method first, which I like called the window method. Okay, so here what we can do is we can write 9x squared on the top left corner and plus 4 on the bottom right corner. Now the two numbers in these two boxes here must give us the same product as the as these two here. So the product must be 32, sorry, 36x squared. That's the product. And we also know that uh, the two numbers here, not only do they have to multiply by 30 to 32x squared, they have to add up to give us the middle term, which is 12x. Okay, so two numbers multiply to give you 36 and add to give you 12. Well, that's 6. So you've got plus 6x and plus 6x. Okay, so here the common factor between these two terms is 3x, as is these two terms. And you see we've got a perfect square here, actually. So 3x times plus 2, and 3x times plus 2. So we end up with, um, let me just put a little, we end up with 9x cubed minus 15x squared uh, minus 32x 
and minus 12 is equal to you've got your first factor which was given x minus 3 and then you've got this perfect square factor which is 3x plus 2 squared 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2 which is the same as 3x plus 2 squared and there's your answer that's fully factorized okay now we could have come to this answer here um, of 3x plus 2 squared by looking at these this term we could have said okay look the first term is a perfect square the last term is a perfect square so if it is a different if it is a perfect square you're going to have a square bracket you'll write the square root of the first term and whatever sign is in the middle term you put there as a plus and the square root of the last term which is 2 and then you check to see if it works if you if you expand this bracket you're going to get 3x all squared which is 9x squared you're going to get 2 all squared which is 4 then you're going to have 2 times 3x times 2 that's 6x times 2 which is 12x so we see it gives us the same as the middle term so we could have come to it when you recognize the first and the last term of the of these um, quadratic expressions are both square terms we can write the square root of each of those and put the sign in the middle there and then we can check to see does that expand to give us the middle term if it does then we know it's a perfect square okay so anyway that's the answer to this question part b now for part c okay now part c tells us to solve this equation and it's only worth two marks and it looks quite complicated when you have a question like this and it's part of another question, okay, normally they would say hence solve, but they didn't put hence. So you should look at the previous type of the question. You'll see that basically this is what we were given. We were given, we worked out that k is 9. So you've got 9 of something cubed, minus 15 of something squared, minus 32 of that something, minus 12. So that is actually of the same form of this. So if we say let x be cosine theta we can replace the cosine theta with x so this is like x cubed so this is like 9x cubed minus 15x squared minus 32x minus 12 equals 0 and we've already factorized this as x minus 3 times 3x plus 2 squared equals 0 so to solve this equation you've got either x minus 3 equals 0 so x equals 3 or 3x plus 2 squared equals 0 so we can say 3x plus 2 equals 0 you can't have a plus or minus 0 so, so x is equal to minus 2 thirds so therefore we can say cosine theta is 3 and cosine theta is minus 2 thirds now there's no answer for that because cosine theta can only have value between 1 and minus 1 but for this we can find out what theta is we can find the inverse cosine of negative two-thirds and we have to solve this in degrees yes and the value we need to get the solution between 0 and 360 so we take out the calculator and we find the inverse cosine make sure it's in degree mode it is inverse cosine of negative two-thirds And that gives us 131.8103. 131.8103. And the other solution will be given by 360 minus this. For cosine, the other solution is always 360 minus the angle you found. So we take this angle, we do 360, take away the angle that we found, which gives you 228.1896. 228. 228 oops. 228.1896. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. So, therefore, now we can write our answers simply to one decimal place as they require. Was that what they said? Yes, one decimal place. So, theta is equal to 131.8 degrees and 228. Point two degrees and there we have the answer to the whole of the question number six so for part c you see something like this only worth two marks have a quick look back at the previous question and you'll see that they're related and so most of the work 
has been done for you. Right? All the way up to here has already been done for you. All you have to do is then solve it to find the values of theta. So that's question number six.